Welcome back to Read Between the Lines. As we're switching gears, we're talking NBA and the owner of the New York Knicks, James Dolan. You will not believe what he had to say to a disgruntled fan. We welcome back this man right here, Eric Engels from Sirius XM, NHL Network. To your right is David Hurley, and to my left, Anthony Cornelli. Okay, I've seen a few letters from owners. I've seen a few letters from fans who are not pleased with their team. I want to read you word for word what owner James Dolan had to say to a fan who was upset about how much this team sucks in the last couple of while, last uh, couple of years. He says, Mr. Bierman, you are a sad person. Why would anybody write such a hateful letter? I'm just guessing, but I'll bet my life you're a mess and you're a hateful mess. What you've done that anyone would consider positive or nice, I'm betting nothing. In fact, I'll bet you're a negative force in everyone who comes in contact with you. You most likely have made your family miserable, alcoholic maybe. I just celebrated my 21 year anniversary of sobriety. You should try it. Maybe it'll help you become a person that folks would like to have around. In the meantime, uh, and in the meanwhile, start rooting for the Nets because the Knicks don't want you. And he ends off saying, respectfully, James Dolan. There's, there's no not going to be too many guys who are going to side yeah, with him on this There's one. not respectfully on that one. That's, a, that's irresponsible. I mean, you hold your players to a higher standard. They go into the stadium and they play their game and fans heckle them all the time. We have issues where if a player flips the bird, he gets fined $25,000. You can't talk back to the fans negatively. How does an owner come out and send an email to a disgruntled fan. I understand that he's a, a disgruntled fan and he has, maybe does, the owner doesn't want to read that kind of stuff, but your product's terrible. The New York Knicks have sucked for, like you said, it's five a, years. It's a huge, and it's a huge market too. It's a huge basketball market too, right? Listen, if James Dolan has made enough money in his life to be a, able to be the owner of the New York Knicks, you'd think that he'd have some sort of angle on how to work things from a public relations standpoint. Yeah. Uh, to think that he could write this letter and not think that it would get out to the public is one thing. You look at any business out there that gets degraded online by a fan or somebody who's buying their products, it's the greatest sales opportunity in an online forum to respond to that mm -hmm. person and say, here's what we're going to do for you. you you come in, we'll show you, we'll prove you differently. Any restaurant out there will tell you the same. James Dolan should have reacted by sending this guy a letter and telling him, come over to my office, I'm going to show you how we run things and maybe you can have an informed opinion on how we operate the New Any York chance Knicks. that he might backtrack on this? Any chance that he might? No, there's no, backtrack. There's no backtrack. There's no, way to, there's what, no way to move back. What has been said has been said. Again, professional sport is for the fans. If it wasn't for the fans, these athletes wouldn't make the big money. The pressure's on them. But he's the owner of the team. Yes, it's his product, but he's not the GM, he's not the coach, he's not the players. So I believe what he said is just out of his own frustration, he's just taking it out a little bit on his yeah, fans. Yeah, you can't be taking it out on maybe, your fans. But, but, but lock, the way yourself, he did lock yourself in the bathroom, close the door, yeah, scream and start your... screaming at the mirror. Yeah. Don't go writing to one of your fans who pays for your product when they are fully valid in their opinion and what they're talking yeah. about to him I don't think there was anything, in that manner. It's I don't absolutely think there was anything absurd. wrong with the letter. I mean, uh, he, he was... Well, well I, I, I think, think I know. I, I think, think alcoholism is well, I mean, something okay, that you so, don't but it was, it was well written. It was okay, professionally so, written. Let's take that away. All right, let's take a <laughs> step back. There typos all yeah. over it, by the way. Let's, <laughs> uh, yeah. let's take a step back and let's remove the alcoholic part and the personal jabs he makes to him. Is he in the wrong then? Is it the tone of the letter that bothers you or is it what the letter no, said, I, right? The content of the letter is the problem. The exactly. content of the letter ignores the fact that the fan has a problem with what the team is doing and the fan is justified with the team's results. And when it comes down to it, the owner has two options. One, he can completely ignore the letter because he doesn't have to respond to every fan that finds his email address and sends something along. Or two, he can find a way to change that fan's opinion and potentially even create a great PR initiative exactly. for the team by making a public thing of it. Because yeah. in today's day and age, to think that's not going to get out there is absolutely absurd and ignorant. And as a 73-year-old man, I have to think that age plays plays a relevance there that he's that he's so ignorant that he wouldn't think that it would get out there. No, I think as a 73-year-old man being able to use an email is already impressive. And the fact <laughs> oh, that he man. the fact that he answered uh, a billionaire would answer an email to like a disgruntled fan. I think that's pretty impressive already. So, okay. I would have been yes, happy as a fan. I, I, yeah, I, mean, no, I, I agree. I agree that, that the the simple fact that he's taken the time to address to the respond, fan is, but, is is fine in itself something. But I disagree. I think the tone that was used in this is unprofessional to the point where now it opens up the question of Adam Silver jumping in here and will he, he be if we fine. move forward? He, he should, should be fine. fine. He should be fine a, a, a big amount. I, I'm hoping it's going to be a close to $100,000. It's very irresponsible. You're owner of the New York Knicks. You're hosting the NBA All-Star Game this weekend with the Nets. This is something that, that can't be done. It's something that should never be done. And as an owner, we saw it last year with the LA Clippers. Uh, as an owner, you have to be above standards. You have to be really the face Crystal of... Clean all exactly. The time. Yeah. And you can't be doing things it's like that. It's a blight on the brand for the NBA. There's no question about it. I agree absolutely with what Dave just said. He's got to be held accountable by the NBA commissioner. 
And when it comes down to it, the New York Knicks have to look themselves in the mirror and start figuring out how they should be running as an organization because I guarantee you the PR manager for that team reading that email is oh, he's has, living, a, living. has a pounding headache right yeah. now. We're all human, gentlemen. Stay right there. Uh, after the break, we're changing gears. We're going back to hockey. We're talking about Alex Galchenyuk. Does he have what it takes? Does he have the skill set to become one of the biggest superstars in the National Hockey League? Don't go anywhere. Lead Between the Lines is brought to you by Diadora. Available at Diadora.com. 